This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Bruch Mabam, welcome everyone. Shalom Aleichem to the Kailalim Agad de Perka, Bechal Makam Shahim. This is a special national uh, shir. Lekavayd Chaydash Nisan and the Yomtev of Pesach Haba Aleinu Latayva. I want to thank uh, Rav Ezra Klein for the Reish Kailalim for organizing uh, all the learning opportunities and for today's event. And uh, if anybody wants to join our particular shir, we get together um, every Monday at 10.30 on this Zoom channel, or you could log in by calling in. Um, but the Kailal gets together daily, or wherever you may be. There are Kailalim uh, across the United States now. And I want to thank uh, my good friend Reb Chaim Fuhr for uh, organizing today's event. And without further ado, we're now holding in the week of Shabbos, Parshas Pekude, Shabbos Chazak, Parshas HaChoydesh, Shabbos Mavarchim Nisan. So we want to uh, speak about all of these in Yanim together. Namely, we want to speak about the Parsha, Parshas Pekude. We want to speak about Parshas HaChoydesh, Havalina Latoiva. And of course, we want to speak about Choydesh Nisan and the Yom Tif of Pesach. So in the Sefer Shal Tshuvas Avnei Nezer of the Rebbe of Sachachov, the Avnei Nezer of Avram Bornstein in Archaim Simen Shin Lamed Vav, he uncovers an amazing revelation about the Yom Tif of Pesach and Chodesh Nisan. And uh, the Avnei Nezer says as follows. He responds to his questioner, to the Shoyal, and he says, Yikaraso Higiani. I, re- I, uh, I got your letter. Erev Shabbos Ben Hashmoshes. I got the letter Friday late in the day. Davar Asher Bikesh Lahashavlai Aleza Sveikos Bumile de Pischa. And uh, you wanted, you're asking questions about a number of items relevant to the Yom Tif of Pesach. Imki Hakosha Lishal. You're asking very good questions. However, says Avnei Nezer, these days are of, of great value. Every hour of Chodesh Nisan is the equivalent of an entire day. This is the great uh, statement of uh, the Avnei Nezer, that every hour in Chodesh Nisan is the equivalent of an entire day, and the question is, what does he mean? One may... Uh, say, on a simple level, it's the busiest time of the year. Chodesh Nisan is the busiest time. You have to get the matzos, you have to prepare for Pesach, you have to prepare, uh, clean the house from chametz, prepare for the Seder. It's literally the busiest time of the year. Time is at a premium, and every hour is the equivalent of an entire day. But the Avnei Nezer is not writing poetically. There must be something more here than just... It's a busy time. What does the Avnei Nezer mean? That every hour is the equivalent of an entire day. By the way, in the official biography of the Avnei Nezer, in the Sefer Abir Haroyim, Chilak Bey's Ois Reish Samach Dalet, he quotes from the Avnei Nezer's son, the Shem Shmuel. I'm very proud to say my grandmother's father was the last Rav of the city of Sachachav. In fact, my grandmother, Leha Shalom, says she saw the Shem Shmuel. And uh, the Shem Shmuel writes that during the days of Nisan, if you would look at my father, the Avnei Nezer, he was very Torod, and he was Masabi v'hoilech v'hoilamos ha'yonim. His mind was like in the upper worlds. So again, the Avnei Nezer very much valued the Zman of Chodesh Nisan. And uh, we want to know what exactly is this expression that Yomim Elu Yikrei Ha'erech Sha Liyoim Yechashev. So we go to um, many people's favorite halacha. There is a joy in life that a Gentile can never appreciate. And that is the great simcha and hana of going into a shul, especially on a Monday or Thursday, figuring that the davening will take an extra, uh, I don't know, five and a half minutes, because it's the long tachnon, and then to experience the great me'ein oilam haba of the gabai giving a clap on the bima, and there's a chasen in the shul, and you don't, say, you don't have to say tachnon, that is a pleasure in life that a goy will never appreciate. 
However, many people uh, very much enjoy Chodesh Nisan, and that is because of what is brought in Masech the Soifrim, Perik Chaf Aleph, Halacha Aleph. The Masech the Soifrim says that the Minog Rabbi Seinu is to fast three days, Keneged, the fast of Mordechai and Esther, after Purim, Monday, Thursday, and Monday. So there is a Minog Yisrael to fast three days, Monday, Thursday, Monday, after Purim, Keneged, Shloisha Siyamim, Laila Vayoyim, Gama Nivenara Yitzai, Atsum Kain. Asks the Masech the Soifrim, so why don't we fast in Chodesh Nisan? Says Masech the Soifrim, because on the first day of, of Nisan, the Mishkan was put up. And for 12 consecutive days, the Nesiyim brought Karbanos. Each day, a different Shevet brought a Karban. So each day that you bring a Karban is a Yom Tif. And then, after that, you have Yom Tif itself. And then, after that, says Masech the Soifrim, La'asad Lavai, the base of Mikdash, is going to be built in Nisan. L'fikach ein oimrim tachnon, kol yimei Nisan. Therefore, you don't say tachnon for the whole month of Nisan. And this is brought in the Shulchan Aruch, in Simen Tav Chav Tesif Beis, Ein Noiflin Al Pneim B'Chol Chaydesh Nisan. We don't say Tachnon the whole Nisan. Now this is certainly worthy of our attention because obviously you're not going to say Tachnon on Pesach and you're not going to say Tachnon on Isru Chag. But why don't you say Tachnon the whole month? Why should you not say Tachnon the entirety of the month of Nisan? And the Beis Yosef is bothered by this kasha, and it's quoted by the Magen Avram, and the Beis Yosef says as follows. The first 12 days of the month, so the Nesim brought their karbanos, so it was a Yom Tif for the Nesim. And then you have Erev Pesach, and then you have Pesach, and then you have Isru Chag, and the Beis Yosef advances the following lambdas. Yatsa Roiv HaChodesh B'Kedusha, the majority of the month has already passed in Kedusha. L'fikach Oisin Kulay Kadosh, therefore we make the whole month holy. In other words, what the Beis Yosef is saying is that it's not, uh, it's not entirely true. Not every single day of Chodesh Nisan has its own independent reason not to say Tachnon. But since the majority of the month has a reason not to say Tachnon, the first 12 days, Erev Pesach, Pesach, Isru Chag, Therefore, we apply the, ru- the rule, Rubai Kekulai. Hoel v'yatsu roiv ha'chodesh be'kedusha. Now, comes the Chassam Soifer in his Hagoy San Shulchan Aruch, and he brings the Kasha of the Achroinim. Now, which Achroinim does he refer to? One of the Achroinim that he refers to is Shalsa Chuz Knesset Yecheskel Simen Kuf Yud Zayin. Okay. By the way, how do you remember Kuf Yud Zayin? Because that's the number of years that we worked in Mitzrayim. What are you talking about? We're at 117. What do you mean? 117 years from the, the death of Levi, when uh, the last of the Shvatim, until we left Mitzrayim, the Medrash says 117 years, that's why there are 117 Psukim and Shir Hashirim, Halach Ma'anya, Diachol HaVasem Ba'ad Mitzrayim, Rashi Tevois, Gematria 117, says the Chida. So this is the Kasha, the Knesset, Yicheskel, Simen, Kuf Yud Zayin. The question is, what about Yud Gimel Nisan? The first 12 days I get, first 12 days, the Nesim brought their Karbanes. Yud Dalid, Zerav Yom Tif. Then you have Pesach. But what about Yud Gimel Nisan? That is the Kasha of the Knesset, Yicheskel, that is cited by the Chassam Sefer. Now I found in the ancient Sefer, Sefer Hamin Hagim of Rabbi Isaac Tirna, he addresses this question regarding Yud Gimel Nisan, and he says very simply, Yud Gimel Nisan is Isru Chag. The Nesim brought their Karbanos, Aleph through Yud Beis, and Yud Gimel Nisan is Isru Chag. That is the answer of Rabbi Isaac Tirna in the Sefer Hamin Hagim. But I always wondered about this question. What is the question? What happened on Yud Gimel Nisan? What do you mean, what happened to Yud Gimel Nisan? Why do you need a reason for Yud Gimel Nisan? You have the first 12 days of Nisan. You have Erev Yom Tif. You have Yom Tif. So you have f- the first 12 days. You have Erev Yom Tif. Yom Tif in Isru Chag, which is at least 10 days. 12 and 10 is 22. You're ready, good to go. That's the uh, Roiv of the Chodesh. Who cares about Yud Gimel Nisan? What exactly is the question? Oh, what about Yud Gimel Nisan? What about it? Well, why does there have to be a reason for Yud Gimel Nisan? So I thought to say that if you don't have a reason not to say Tachna on Yud Gimel Nisan, you don't have a roiv. 
you have 12 days, which is a miyot. You have another 10 days, which is a miyot. And you cannot be mitzarev two miyots to create the roiv. In other words, you would still say tachnon. If you just are going to deal with the first 12 days and then the block of 10 days, you don't have a roiv. You need to have a long, contiguous block of time not to say tachnon in order to apply the lamdos of hal v'yatsa roiv ha'choydesh b'ktusha. So therefore we need to bridge the gap between the first 12 days and the next 10 days and hence the achorinam ask, what happened to Yod Gimel Nisan? That's L'chayra what you have to say, and you could bring a raya to this yisoid. Because we all know that during the month of Tishrei, we do say Tachnon. Why do we say Tachnon in the month of Tishrei? Let's make a cheshben. You have two days Rosh Hashanah. You have Erev Yom Kippur. You have Yom Kippur. You have the four days in between Yom Kippur and Sukkot. Then you have in Chutz La'aretz, you have... Sukkot, which is, we're up to eight, another eight days, that's 16 days, plus Isru Chag, that's 17 days, so you have a roiv. Ah, so you'll say, yeah, you have a roiv, but you don't have one contiguous block of time that creates a roiv. You have Rosh Hashanah, and then it's split up. Then you have Erev Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, four days, now here's where it gets tricky. Because in, in, Eretz, in Chutz Aretz, you have, we're up to six, we have nine days of Yom Tif, that's 15, and Esru Chag, that's 16, you already have the majority of the month. However, maybe in Eretz Yisrael, you only have eight days of Sukkot and Esru Chag, so you only have 15 consecutive days, so you don't have one contiguous block of time, you only have 15 days, which is not a roiv, and perhaps then that is the reason why the Achreinim ask that you should have to, what, how do you account for the 13th day of Nisan? There's nothing significant and special about the 13th day of Nisan. Hence, you don't have a block of Zman, which is Roiv of the Chodesh. So therefore, we're back to the question of the Achreinim. What do you do with the 13th day of Nisan? And so far, we saw the answer of the Sefer Haman Hagim, of Rabbi Isaac Tirna. But I want to share with you a pshat that I saw from the Shlach HaKadosh. Shlach HaKadosh says, your Gimel is very simple. The first 12 days, the Nasiyam brought their karbanis. However, we know that Aaron HaKoyen had Chalishas Hadas when he found out about the offering of the Nasiyam. And Aaron HaKoyen felt bad that he didn't have a share in the offering of the Nasiyam. And Hashem said, Don't worry, you light the menorah, your madlik umeitav as haneroys, shalcha gedoyla mishalahem. So, what did Aaron do? What did Shevet Levi have? Shevet Levi had the Hadlakas Hamanoira. Yud Gimel Nisan is Keneged Shevet Levi and the Hadlakas Hamanoira. So, in fact, not only are the first 12 days the Yaman Toivim of the Nasiyim of Ruvain through Binyamin, but even Yud Gimel is Keneged Shevet Levi in the Hadlakas Hamanoira. So, Yud Gimel is also accounted for, says the Holy Shlach Kadosh. Coming back to the Chsam Soifer, the Chsam Soifer in the Hagoy San Shulchan Aruch again asks this question, what do, you go, what do you do with Yud Gimel Nisan? And the Chsam Soifer says three answers. Answer number one. Who is the twelfth Shevet? Who is the twelfth Shevet that is Makriv on the twelfth day of Nisan? That is none other than Achira ben Enon Lamate Naftali. What kind of carbon did the Nasiyim bring in the Chanukah Samazbech? They brought a carbon shlamim. Now the carbon shlamim, how long, how long do you have to eat the carbon shlamim? You have two days to eat the carbon. That means uh, Naftali could have eaten it on the 12th of Nisan and on the 13th. So says Achsam Soifer, the 13th of Nisan is the second day of the Achila of the carbon of the Nasi of Shevet Naftali. That's the first answer of Achsam Soifer. Answer number two, the Chsam Soifer. Says the Chsam Soifer, if you look in the Medrash, you'll find that the city of Sedaim was overturned on the 16th day of Nisan. Which means the Malachim came to Avraham the day before, namely the 15th day of Nisan. So the Malachim came to Avraham on the 15th day of Nisan. Okay. Which means the Malachim came to Avraham on the third day of his Mila came to Avraham on the third day of his Mila, then what day was the Yom HaMila of Avraham? On Yud Gimel Nisan. Ah, oh, says the Chsam Soifer, the special significance of, of the 13th day of Nisan, it's Yom Milasai Shel Avraham Avinu. 
Okay, and finally, the third answer, the Chassam Seifer, is that the year the Jewish people erected the Mishkan, Rosh Chodesh Nisan fell out on Sunday, like it does this year, which means Erev Pesach came out on Shabbos, like it does this year, which means they couldn't bring the Karban Chagiga on Erev Pesach, they brought it on Yud Gimel, and therefore the year of the Hakamas HaMishkan, Yud Gimel Nisan was also a Yom Tif, so the first Hakrava of the Karban Chagiga was brought on Yud Gimel Nisan, therefore it is always stamped and etched as a Yom Tif, and therefore the first 20 Two in Chutzar in Eretz Yisrael and 23 days in Chutzar Eretz are stamped forever and ever as a yoim, as a yoim of um, a yomim toivim. And therefore, since the majority of Chodesh Nisan is Yom Tif, we apply the principle Hol V'yatsa Roiv HaChodesh B'Kedusha. This is the answer of the Chassam Seifer. Comes the Masa Rekeach. The Masa Rekeach is Rebbe Lezer, Rekeach of Amsterdam. And he says that if you look in Masech de Seifrim, nowhere will you find this Lumdus, which was which is invented by the Beis Yosef, that the reason you don't say Tachnon in Chodesh Nisan is Hoyl V'yatsa Roiv HaChodesh B'Kedusha. No, this is not brought anywhere in Masech Seifrim. In fact, if you look at the Masech Seifrim, the Masech Seifrim says there's a, a different reason why you don't say Tachnon for the entirety of the month of Nisan, and that is the Masech Seifrim ends as follows. Masech Seifrim says, V'chein la'asid lavai, asid ha-mikdash l'hibanois b'nisan. In the future, the base ha-mikdash is going to be built in Chodesh, Nisan, Lekaye ma shenemar in kol chodosh tachas hashemesh. Says Masech de Seifrim, that in the future, the Beis HaMikdash is going to be built on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, in Nisan, excuse me, in the month of Nisan. And the, the Master Rekech explains that in the future, the Beis HaMikdash will be built on the 15th day of Nisan. Now, you can't have a Beis HaMikdash if Amalek is around. So first you're going to have to destroy Amalek, and then you can build the base of Mikdash. So when are we going to destroy Amalek? Erev Pesach. As if you had nothing better to do on Erev Pesach, you're busy gr- grinding your charoises, and if you know how to do it, you have a gshmak, a hammer, with like some, you know, a grooved hammer. So as you're, you're grinding the charoises, you know, somebody might pass an Amaleki before you, and you'll give it a little, you know, clap, iber and cup, and uh, maybe you could kill two birds with one stone. Uh, but says the Master Rekech, Melchemes Amolek will take place Erev Pesach. Binyan Beis HaMikdash will take place Tesvav Nisan. But the big dilemma is, when will we be Mechanech, the third Beis HaMikdash, Sheyavai B'mher V'yameinu? Says the Master Rekech, we will not be able to inaugurate the third Beis HaMikdash on Pesach, because Ein Ma'arvin Simcha B'Simcha. And therefore, we will inaugurate it in the seven days remaining from Chodesh Nisan that are not accounted for. The first 12 days, the Hakravas Hanasim. The 13th day, we already provided five reasons for. Either it's Isru Chag for the Nasim, like the Sefer Amin Hagim says, or it's, as the Shla Kodesh says, it's the Yoim for Shevet Levi. Or as the Chsam Soifer says, it's the second day of the Hakrava of the Achila of Achira Ben Enon. Or it's Yoim Ilasa Shel Avram Avinu. Or the Chsam Soifer says, it's the Yoim Hakravas HaChagiga, the first year in the Midbar. Then you have Era Pesach. Then you have eight days or nine days of Pesach. Then you have Isru Chag. And the following seven days, the last remaining seven days of Nisan, will be the Chanukah, the inauguration of the third Beis HaMikdash. So it comes out, says the Master Rekeach, Every single day of Chodesh Nisan is Kadosh, is accounted for, has its own independent reason not to say Tachnon. By the way, the Ichsam Soifer also brings this down in his Hagois, as well as the Kafachayim, brings down this Maser Ekech, that even the final seven days of Nisan are accounted for. But Marvar Abayisai, it's interesting, not everybody agrees that the third Beis HaMikdash will be inaugurated and the final seven days of Chodesh Nisan. I'm sure many of you are bothered by the question that if you look in the Malbim and Sefer Ezra, Parak Vav, Pesach Tesvav, 
The Malbum says that the Chanukah of the third Beis Hamikdash will take place in Chodesh Adar, namely on the 23rd day of Adar until Chodesh Nisan. So it's not unanimously held that the Chanukah of the third Beis Hamikdash will be in Nisan, but this is the opinion of the Masa Rekech. The Arach HaShulchan also comes in on the action. And the Arach HaShulchan observes the fact that this Lamdos of Hoyl V'yatsa Reiv HaChodesh B'Kedusha is the, um, not unanimously held. In other words, this is, so to speak, the invention of the Beis Yosef. The Beis Yosef invented this Lamdos of Hoyl V'yatsa Reiv HaChodesh B'Kedusha. And the Arach HaShulchan therefore says there's another reason why we don't say Tachnon in the whole month of Nisan. And that is, does anybody know, what is the Mazel of Chodesh Nisan? What is the uh, astrological sign of the month of Nisan? The mazal of Chodesh Nisan is the tle, the sheep. Now the sheep is the god of the Egyptians. Says our Chashuch, and that is why, as the makos are coming by makos arbe, by makos barad, Paroi was very contrite, and Paroi was very humbled, and Paroi said, Hashem HaTzadik, Vani Ami HaRashoim, and even, but when it came to Makas Arbe, all of a sudden Paroi was emboldened. Vayegoresh Oisam, Paroi chased down Moshe and Aaron. And then Makas Choyshech, Paroi was even more brazen. I'll toy I don't want you, you're not going to see my face ever again. I don't understand. Paroi was, was already humbled. He already said, Hashem HaTzadik, Vani Ami HaRashoyim. What changed? What caused this turnaround? Says Yar Chashulchan Simen Tav Chaf Tes Sif Alef Thu Gimel. Paroi knew that the Mazel of Mitzrayim was the Tle, and as the Chodesh Nisan was coming closer and closer, Paroi felt more empowered and more emboldened. If he could just stick it out until Chodesh Nisan, maybe he'll be able to hold on to Klal Yisrael. And therefore, when Chodesh Nisan came, Paroi said, "That's it. You're never going to see my face again. Get out of here, Moshe and Aaron." So the Rebbein Shem tells Moshe and Aaron, this month that belonged to Paroi, that belonged to Mitzrayim, that they were boiteach in hachoydesh hazeh, this month, that the Egyptians think that their God controls hachoydesh hazeh lochem, this month will be your month. From now on, the month of Nisan, which belonged to Mitzrayim, this month I will show how I am Meshadein Marchei Mazolois, and this month belongs to you, and therefore says the Arch HaShulchan, since in this month the power of Egypt was broken, and the Rebbein Shalom demonstrated his Kayach and his power to control nature, HaChodesh HaZelochem, the entirety of the month of Nisan, is Kulai Kadosh. And now we come to my favorite offering of all. And that is the offering of the Shla HaKadosh. I'll tell you the truth. The first thing I ever printed was this Shla HaKadosh to answer the question of the Beis Yosef. Again, the Beis Yosef seems to have been Mechadesh Olamdos. That the reason why we don't say Tachnon in the month of Nisan is because since the majority of the month is accounted for, therefore we don't say Tachna in the whole month. Comes the Shla HaKadosh and he says uh, an amazing idea. We're going to lane this Shabbos, Shabbos ha- Parshas HaChodesh. HaChodesh Hazel Lachem Roish Chodashem. This month is for you, the beginning of the month. Rishon Hu Lachem Shana. And uh, think carefully about this Pasuk. HaChodesh HaZelochem. This month is for you, Roish Chodashem, the beginning of the months. Rishon Hu Lachem, it is the beginning for you, L'Chod Hashana. The Pasuk is very repetitive. It, it says, HaChodesh HaZelochem, Roish Chodashem, Roish Chodashem, Rishon Hu Lachem, L'Chod Hashana. Why does it have to say, Rishon Hu Lachem, L'Chod Hashana? It already says, HaChodesh HaZelochem, Roish Chodashem. Says the Shlach Kadosh, the month of Nisan is different than any other month. Hachodesh Hazelachem, this month will be for you. Roish Chodashim, every day in Nisan has the kedusha of Roish Chodesh. Rishain Hu Lachem Lachodesh Hashana. It's also the first month of the year. The pasuk is enunciating two principles. Number one, Hachodesh Hazelachem, Roish Chodashim, this month will be for you. 
Rosh Chodesh. Every day of Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh. Bez Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh. Yud Gimel Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh. Chav Hei Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh. HaChodesh Hazeh Alochem Rosh Chodeshim. Every month of Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh. And Rishon Hulachem L'Chachi Hashana. Now, we're going to try to explain what does this mean that every month in Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh. But this is the great revelation of the uh, Shlach HaKadosh, that every month of Nisan is Neskadesh B'Kedushas Rosh Chodesh, and therefore, we could come back and answer the question, why don't we say Tachnon in the entirety of the month of Nisan? Not every day is accounted for. What about Yud Gimel? What about the days after Pesach? And the answer is no. Every day a, a Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh, and therefore, Every day has its own independent reason why we don't say Tachnon, and we could say, Kal HaChodesh Kulay Kadosh. The entire month, every single day, is holy. So, uh, we just learned about the significance of each day in Chodesh Nisan, and by the way, if anybody would like to um, see this inside, we just learned Maimer Aleph, uh, the Sefer, uh, my humble Sefer on Pesach called Magad Rakia. Uh, I actually started with a question from Maimer Bez. And uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of that Sefer, it's available in farm stores or you could order it from the website rabbidg.com and with free delivery before Yom Tif. Let's now move on to the next Indian. And that is, let's move on to the Indian of... What exactly does it mean that every day in Chodesh Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh? By the way, today is a very important day on the calendar. This might be the most important day in the year. Really? What happened today? Today is the first day of creation. Chav Hei Adar Vayoymer Eloikim Yehiyar What do you mean? I thought, uh, I thought the reason why we say Slichais in Chodesh Elul is because that's when Hashem... No, no, no. That's according to Rabbi Elezer who says the world was created in Tishrei. We don't paskin like Rebbe Lezer. We paskin like Rebbe Yeshua. Benisa Nivra Ha'olam. And Memela, Benisa Nivra Ha'olam means Adam Rishon was created on the first day of Nisan. And therefore, the first day of creation was Chaf Adar. Benisa Nivra Ha'olam. Benisa Nigalu. Benisa Asidin Ligael. And the moon catcher in the Sefer, Shari Yisachar, wants to know, just because Rebbe Hashem redeemed us in Chodesh Nisan the first time around, why does that mean that Rebbe Hashem will redeem us again in Chodesh Nisan the second time around? What exactly is this svara of Benisa Nigalu u Benisa Nasidun Ligal? Okay, now I want to take a break. I want everyone to take out a chumash. Okay, I'm sure you all have a chumash at home. Please take out a chumash. You could use a Mekrois Gadoilois, you could use Art Scroll, you could use Sincino, you could use Feldheim, you could use Mitsuda, you could use your Yiddish Beis Yehudas, you could use Dershu, yeah, whatever you want to use. All, all Chumashim are acceptable. Parshas Pekude, Perek Mem, Pasuk Beis. I want to point out Ha'ara and the Psukim, and you're going to be so uh, grateful to me. That even uh, Ilan in South Africa is going to be happy that I uh, pointed this out. Ilan, I spot you. Don't worry. You can't hide over there. We got you. But um, Ilan is in, in uh, quarantine over there. Okay, but soon everyone will be vaccinated. And you'll be on the Madrig of Moshe Rabbeinu. You'll be able to remove the Masve Bevoyoy El Yisrael. Okay, turn to Parag Mem, Pasuk Bez. Biyoim ha chodesh harishoin beechad la chodesh takim es ha mishkan oyamayir. On Biyoim ha chodesh harishoin. On the day of the first month. Could somebody just tell me what that means? That's all I want to know. I don't have very complicated questions. What does it mean, Biyoim ha chodesh harishoin? On the day of the first month. That doesn't make any sense. Biyoim ha chodesh harishoin. Anybody have an explanation for that? Biyoim. It should leave out the word biyoim. It should say b'chaydash harishayim be'echad l'chaydash. What in the world does it mean? Biyoim ha'chaydash harishayim. Maybe it's uh, differentiating between yom and laila. Biyoim is opposed to laila. It never said the word yom means calendar date. 
What does it mean, Biyoyim HaChodesh HaRishayim? What does it mean, the day of the first month? Uh, whatever, even if it means the daylight, it still doesn't make sense. What does it mean, the day of the first month? The first month is a month. So which day? The day of the first month? It's just a Pasuk and Chumash, you know? I know, Toysus, you could tell me, what about a Pasuk and Chumash? Read the Pasuk. Biyoyim HaChodesh HaRishayim. Next, interesting question. The Yalkut Ruveni in Parshas Lech Lecha brings that Rivan Shem tells Avraham Avinu, Ti kaver b'seva toiva. You will be buried at a good ripe old age. What does it mean at a ripe old age? Toiva. The month of toiva, that's the month of teves. In fact, the Rashi Tevois of Ti kaver b'seva toiva is teves. Says the Yalkut Ruveni, Avraham Avinu was nifter in the month of teves. By the way, the, the Seder Hadoyrois also brings down that Avram Avinu passed away in the month of Teves. That's very nice. Good for the Yalkut Ruveni. But how could that be true? How in the world could Avram Avinu have passed away in the month of Teves? There is a Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, Yud Amid Beis, going on to Yud Aleph Amid Aleph, that brings the Machlokes Reb Lezen Reb Shua, where the Ava is born in Tishrei and Nifter in Tishrei, or born in Nisan and Nifter in Nisan. But everybody agrees, Avram Avinu was either Nifter in Nisan or Nifter in Tishrei. But he was not Nifter in Teves. So what does the Yalkut Ruveni mean that Avram Avinu was Nifter in the month of Teves? And you know who's bothered by this question, none other than Chacham Yosef Chaim the Benishchai. And the Benishchai says, how can the Yalkut Ruveni say? That Avram Avinu was Nifter in the month of Teves, but we know that Avram Avinu was Nifter either in Tishrei or in Nisan. And the Ben Ishchai brings an amazing tradition of the Sefer Karnayim, which is an ancient Kabbalistic work. That the month of Nisan incorporates all the months of the year. There are months in Nisan that are Tishrei months. There are months in Nisan that are Cheshvan months. There are months in Nisan that are Nisan that are Kislev, Teves. There are months of Nisan that are Av months. Ah, oh, when the Yalkut Ruveni says that Avram Avinu passed away in Teves, he means he passed away in Nisan on the month, on the days of Nisan that correspond to Chodesh Teves. So it's not a stira. The Gemara is right. Avram was Nifter in Nisan. But when in Nisan did Avram pass away? Since there are, mo- there are days in Nisan that correspond to Teves, he was Nifter in Nisan, the days in Nisan that correspond to Teves. Based on this comment of the Ben Yehoyada, the Agra de Kala, not to be confused with the Agra de Perka, not to be confused with the name of your Kaila, the uh, Bnei Yisachar wrote, of course, the Bnei Yisachar. He wrote Agra de Kala, he wrote a Sefer Agra de Perka. In the Agra de Kala, on this week's parsha. He reveals to us the deeper meaning of what does it mean that Nisan incorporates all the months of the year, and he quotes the tradition of Rav Menachem Mendel. Um, he quotes a uh, tradition, excuse me, of the Chayzim Milublin. The Chayzim Milublin. He would write down on each day of Nisan what is going to happen in the corresponding month of the year. Says. Uh, the uh, Bnei Yisachar and the Sefer Agra de Kala, the first 12 months of Nisan correspond to the 12 months of the year. So the first day of Nisan corresponds to the whole month of Nisan. And the second day of Nisan corresponds to Iyar. And the third day of Nisan corresponds to Tammuz. And the fourth day of Nisan corresponds to Av. And the fifth day, Elul. And the sixth day, Tishrei. And the seventh day, Cheshvan. I think I skipped. But each day of Nisan corresponds to a different month of the year. So the fourth month of the year is uh, Tammuz, and the fifth is Av, and the seventh is Tishrei, and Teves is the tenth month of the year. Teves is the tenth month of the year. So each day of Nisan corresponds to another day. By the way, the Chayzim Leblin would write down on each day of the year uh, each day of Nisan, what, what is going to happen in that year, in that particular month. Interestingly, the Chayzim of Leblin did not write what would happen in the fifth month of the year, and that's because in that year, Menachem Av, the Chayzim of Leblin passed away. 
And his Talmudim realized the reason why he didn't uh, dev- prophetically predict what would happen in the month of Av is because he wouldn't be around in the month of Av. Oh, comes Agar the Pirka and says, now we can understand the simple passing in this week's parasha. On the day of the first month, what day in the Jewish calendar corresponds to the month of Nisan? The answer is the first day of Nisan. On the day of the first month, what day in the calendar corresponds to the first month of the year? The Pasuk continues, the first day of the month. So this Pasuk is really bringing out this Yesoid that the Ben Chai speaks about in general terms, namely, that the month of Nisan corresponds to all the months of the year. And the Chayzim Leblin explains in more detail that each day of Nisan corresponds to another month. Now we understand the meaning of the Pasuk and Pekudeh, B'yoyim ha-choydesh harishain. On the day of the first month. What day of the year corresponds to the first month? The first day of Nisan. Comes the Shari Yisachar, who by the way is the Munkacher, who quotes his Zayda, the Bnei Yisachar, and he says, now we understand why Benisan Nigalu u Benisan Asidan Ligal. Each day of Nisan corresponds to another month of the year. Which day of Nisan corresponds to Nisan? The first day of Nisan corresponds to Nisan. Which Nasi was Makriv on the first day of Nisan? Nachshem ben Aminadav of Shevet Yehuda. That means the month of Nisan is the month of Shevet Yehuda of the Malchus based David. Hence, the reason why the whole month is um, inclined, is, is uh, opportune for Mashiach to come, is because this is the month of Shevet Yehuda, and this is the month of David HaMelech. By the way, the Shari Yisachar explains that this gives us an insight into why Shabbos Hagadol is called Shabbos Hagadol. You know why Shabbos Hagadol is called Shabbos Hagadol? Shabbos Hagadol was originally the 10th month of Nisan. The 10th month of Nisan corresponds to Chodesh Teves. Now, Chodesh Teves, the Sefer Hayetzira writes, the Rebbe Hashem created it by being Mekasher Gedi, by tying the goat. Ah, oh, what day of Chodesh Nisan do we tie the goat to the bedpost? Shabbos Hagado, Shabbos Hagado. We're Mekasher the Gedi to the bedpost. Furthermore, what is the Tziruf, what is the permutation of the name of Hashem for Chodesh Teves? That emanates from the Pasuk. Gadlu Lashem Iti Unaroimim Hashemah Yachtav The Soifei Tevois of Gadlu is, ends in a Vav. Lashem ends in a He. Iti ends in a Yud. Aroimah ends in a He. That corresponds to Chodesh Teves. And it says Gadlu. So Shabbos HaGadol corresponds to the month of Teves. Because it is the day that from which we learn out the Gadlus of the name of Hashem. Now I would like to add um, a new Chedosh. A new reason why it's called Shabbos Hagadah. By the way, you know what Rashi says. Rashi writes in the Sefer HaPardes that the reason why it's called Shabbos Hagadah is because people come to the Drasha and the Rabbi speaks and he speaks and he speaks and he speaks and it seems like the day is never going to end. It seems like the day has more than 24 hours in it. Says Rashi, that's why it's called Shabbos Hagadol. It seems like the day is so long. By the way, this year it's, it's going to really be Shabbos Hagadol. Because this year, it's Arab Pesach Shechali Yis So there's even more for the Rabbi to talk about. So it's going to be even a longer drasha. So the day is really never going to end. By the way, Rashi says that's why Yom Kippur is called Soima Rabbah, the great day, because it's you're in Shul the whole day. It's like the day's never gonna end. That's what Rashi writes. Not, I'm not, don't take my word for it. I want to say, you know why it's called Shabbos Hagadol? Because Shabbos Hagadol is Yud Yud Nisan um, in the original year that we're taking out of Mitzrayim. Who was Nifter on Yud Nisan? Well, according to the Ben Yehoyada. Avram Avinu passed away in Chodesh Teves. What do you mean he passed away in Nisan? No, he passed away on Nisan, the day that corresponds to Chodesh Teves. Now what day in Nisan corresponds to Chodesh Teves? Yud Nisan. 
Yud Nisan is the yard site of Avraham. What is Avraham Avinu called in Tanakh in Yehoshua? Ha'adam Hagodol Ba'anokim, the great man among giants. Shabbos Hagodol, it's the day of Avraham Avinu, the Godol. That's why it's called Shabbos Hagodol. Who was the who in Tanakh is called a Godol? The only person called a Godol is Avraham Avinu. It's his yard site on Shabbos Hagodol. But Marv Rabbi say now we have a deeper understanding of the words of the Shlach. The Shloss said every day in Chodesh Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh. Why does every day in Nisan have Kedushas Rosh Chodesh? Now we understand. Because every day is corresponding to another month of the year. It's like the father head of the whole year. It's like the embryonic material of the whole year. It's the Rosh of the whole year. Every month is represented in the first month of the year. Um, every month in Nisan has Kedushas Rosh Chodesh some days correspond to Tishrei some days correspond to Nisan some days correspond to Elul the whole month is the month of Rosh Chodesh Marv Rabbi now we have a deeper understanding of the holy words of the Avnei Nezer where the Avnei Nezer says every day of the month of Nisan is precious Yikare Ha'erech Shaliyoyim Yechashev Every hour is like a day. Why would every hour of Chodesh Nisan be like a day? The answer is, because this is the beginning of the year. This is the origin of the year. The mashal I like to give is, you know, um, nowadays the doctors are very big on preserving the uh, umbilical cord. Because from the umbilical cord you could possibly regenerate any part of the body. Because whatever is like the original formation of an embryo, whatever are the original cells from which the embryo developed, from there you could create any part of the child because that's the origin of the child. In the same way, the embryonic cells of the material that the year is made of is Chodesh Nisan. Chodesh Nisan is Rishon Hu Lachem Al Chodesh Hashana. Ha'chodesh hazeh lochem roish chadashim. Rishon hu lochem l'chod she'ashana. Chodesh Nisan is, so to speak, the embryonic fluid of the year, the, the, um, the original material of which the concept of Zman is made up of. And therefore every hour of Chodesh Nisan has a significance of an entire day. In fact, the Chidushe Harim writes in his comments to Parshas Ha'chodesh, he says, that if a person would appreciate the value of Zman and Chodesh Nisan, loy hayinu mevatlem afilu rega, we would not be mevatel even one moment of Chodesh Nisan. So we have our, our work cut out for us. We're now embarking on the six days of preparation for the beginning of Chodesh Nisan. And let's truly treasure and value the time that we have ahead of us. And uh, I want to share with you one other subject regarding Chodesh Nisan and the Yemei Pesach Haba'alinu L'tayva. Uh, as we know, this is a month of a special opportunity, as we've tried to bring out. And especially the Yom Tov of Pesach has a special order to it. In fact, the night of the Seder is called Seder. So even someone who is uh, unorganized, even if you're not the kind of guy that makes lists, you know, some people every day, they wake up, they make a list of what they need to do. And some people, they just do it. But even if you're not the most organized kind of person, the night of the Seder, before we get going, we say the Seder. We say a list. And by the way, the Seder Halayla was written by Rishonim, some say Rashi, others say from the other Balei Atoisvis. And the Shem Yishmuel has a very important question. And that is the Shem Yishmuel asked, the one night of the year that we uh, claim that we're doing things based on a Seder, we go out of Seder, we go out of order. Because we know the typical order is Sur Meirav Asetayv. First we, turn, we should turn away from evil, first we should repair Avera, and then we could do good. And yet the night of the Seder, when we pride ourselves that everything we're doing is in order, we say, Kadesh Orchatz, sanctify yourself and then wash yourself. And as we know, this is not just order of operations, but this is sort of a guide of embarking on Avoidas Hashem. This seems to be very much out of order. It should be first Rechatz and then Kadesh. 
first you clean and then you shine. First you wash and then you sanctify. Sur me rava ase toiv. But not the night of the Seder. The night of the Seder is or Kaddish. First sanctify yourself and then Orchatz. Another interesting thing is we know that in the Yom Tov of Pesach we daven for Tal. As opposed to on Sukkot we daven for rain. On the Yom Tov of Pesach we daven for Tal. What is the meaning of that? Certainly... We know that that's when we uh, want the towel because it's the rainy season is over. But what is the deeper connection between praying for dew and the Yom Tov of Pesach? Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz in the Aros Devash in his first drush, and he talks about this further in Chelek Beis, Drush Yud Beis. Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz has a classic interpretation of the Gemara in Masech Tainus and Daf Dalet, where the Gemara says, Amar Rabrachya, Klal Yisrael asked, made an inappropriate request of the Rebbe Shalom, but the Rebbe Shalom responded correctly. Klal Yisrael said, Rebbe Shalom, please be like the rain to us. And God said, I will do better. God said, ah, my daughter, I will be like the dew. The rain, people don't always want rain, but the dew, we always want the dew. I will be re- better than the rain, I will be like the dew. Comes Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, and Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz says, what's the deeper meaning here? What was Klal Yisrael asking for? And what was the response of the Rabbi Yonis Shalom? Says Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, there's a major difference scientifically between rain and dew. Rain comes from the precipitation down here in this world. There's moisture in the atmosphere. It rises up. It then condenses in the clouds. And then it falls down. First, the precipitation starts down here in this world, it goes up, and then it comes back down. The dew, on the other hand, is not dependent on any precipitation down here. There is always moisture in the atmosphere in heaven, it condenses and it falls down. Says Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, the rain is symbolic of what is called the Sarusa de la'ila. Inspiration from above, uh, uh, excuse me, is, is symbolic of what is called the Sarusa de la Sata. Inspiration from down here. The Rebbein Shalom deals with Kal Yisrael in two manners as well. One manner with which Rebbein Shalom deals with us is Rebbein Shalom says, look, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you Siata Deshmaya, but you have to put your best foot forward. Hashivenu Hashem Eilecha V'Nashuvah. Rebbein Shalom. Rebbein Shalom looks to see if we're going to take the first step and if we do our utmost and we do our part, Yibbam Shalom is matzliach derachinu. And Yibbam Shalom says, you did your part, I will come in and I'll do my part. That is called Isarusa de la Sata. We take the first step and Yibbam Shalom takes us the rest of the way there. That is analogous terrain. However, there are times, says Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, where Yibbam Shalom sees Kal Yisrael. And he sees that we're unworthy. And he sees we are naked and bare of mitzvahs. Like the Pasuk says, V'ad Eroim Ve'arya. And the Yvon Shalom says, I will inspire you and I will elevate you even if you don't do any effort on your part. That is called Isarusa de la'ela. That is analogous to the dew. The dew is the moisture of the atmosphere with no uh, participation of the moisture down here in this world. Klal Yisrael turns to Yvon Shalom. They thought that the way the Yvon Shalom works is HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to us, My daughter, Pischi li Pesach, Kechuda Shamachat. The Yibam Shalom says, My daughter, open up for me the size of a needle, and I'll open up for you. Wagons full, I will open up for you. I will open up for you doorways that wagons could go through. Kal Yisrael thought that the Yibam Shalom can only approach us if we approach Him. And therefore we say, Rebbein Shalom, please be like the rain to us. And Rebbein Shalom says, I will do better than that. I will, I will approach you. And I will come close to you. And I will inspire you with no effort on your part. I will be like the dew to Klal Yisrael. Says Rabbi Yonis, and Klal Yisrael thought the Rebbein Shalom only can come close to us if we come close to Him, like the rain. And the Rebbein Shalom says, no, sometimes I will inspire you with no effort on your part. Says Hagoin, Rav Meir, Shapiro, Rashiva of Chachmi Lublin, and the Sefer Imre Das. In Choydesh Tishrei, it's the month of Tshuva. 
It's the month that we have to put in our effort. And we have to come early and say slichas. And we have to repent. And we have to do tshuva, tefillah, and tzedakah. It's the month that we daven for rain. We say, Yerba Nisham, we did our part. Now you come in and you do your part. But the month of Nisan is a different kind of zman. It's the sarusa de la'ila. The Yerba Nisham says, I know you're empty. I know you're bereft. I know you can't take the first step. So I'm going to inspire you. And therefore, in the month of Nisan, we're mispalel for Tal, which is symbolic of the Riban Shom giving us spiritual achievements, even with no effort on our part. Berachamim, merubim, and with complete and pure rachamim. That is the meaning. We're gonna, those who say um, piyutim, or those who say the Yoytzrois for Parshas HaChodesh, we say in the Yoytzrois for this week's parsha, we say the month of Nisan is Chodesh Asher Yeshuais Makifais. Literally, it means it's a month that we're surrounded by salvation. But Rav Menachem Mendel Mirimanov says in the Sefer Beres Mayim the Chidush Rim brings down. There's another meaning of the word Makifais. Makifais could mean on credit. It's a month where salvation is on credit. It's a month where we're completely undeserving of Hashem's Rachamim. Where the Yibam Shem is Mashbia on us, Rachamim, Chesed, Ruchnius, Closeness, Deveikos, Hiskarvos, even though we don't deserve it, but we're going to have to pay Him back in the 49 days of Svira. But right now, the month of Nisan is the month of Tal. It's the month of Esarusa de Leila. We did nothing on our part. You want to hear a, a gorgeous Vart the Shem Yishmoa brings from Rabarach of Mezhbesh. There are many miracles that took place in the time of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Dam, Tzfardeya, Kinim, Makas, Bechoyrois. One of the miracles was Pesach. God jumped over our home. Why name the whole Yom Tiv Pesach? Was that the only miracle that transpired? Was that the only nest that took place? Why don't we name it? The Yom Tiv of Bechoyrois, the Yom Tiv of Tzfardeya. Why Pesach? Says Reb Baruch of Mezhbuz, the word Pesach is symbolic of the Madriga that Klai Yisrael reaches during this man of the year. Where typically it is incumbent upon us. Typically it is our responsibility. We have to open the door. And the Rav says, once you open the door, I will take you the rest of the way there. Typically the Rav Shalom says, Pizchi li Pesach kechudoy shamachat. Normally you need to open the door. But in the month of Nisan, Rav Hashem jumps over the door. He, he obviates the need for us to open the door, to take the first step. Rav Hashem says to us, you know what, during this month, I am moichel, the fact that you have to open the door. You don't have to open the door. You just show up, and I'll take you the rest of the way there. That's the, that su- summarizes, that captures the essence of what Pesach is. It's a Yom Tov, Rav Hashem is Pasach ala Pesach, he jumps over the door. In fact, we know there's a minog bro in the Ramon Simon Pei. To open the door, to keep the door open the night of the Seder, what is the symbolism of keeping the door open the night of the Seder? Rav Avram Shor brings in his Agada Halekach Vahalibov, the symbolism of keeping the door open the night of the Seder is to indicate that the night of the Seder, we don't have to open the door, all the doors have already been opened. The Yibam Shem opens up all the gateways, opens up all the doors the night of the Seder. The Yibam Shem takes us all the way. It's not a month of Geshem, it's a month of Tal. It's a month of She Yeshua, it's Makifais. All salvation has already been given to us on credit. Marv Rabbi Yisai, the Meshach says, in Parshas Vaschanan, he quotes a Medrash, that the Rebbe Shalom says, Klal Yisrael, I am so close to you. Not only are you my daughter, you're my sister. Not only are you my sister, you're my mother. So we are called three names of endearment. My daughter, my sister, my mother. Says the Meshachachma, these three terms of endearment describe three different Yom Tavim. Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot. The Yom Tif of Pesach, we're, the, we're God's daughter. We're the Rav daughter. What does it mean we're his daughter? He does everything. He cares for us. He elevates us. 
He brings us close to Him. He obviates the need for us to open the door. Our relationship with Hashem is, we're nothing. Yibam Hashem takes us completely under His wing. We're His daughter. Comes the Yom Tif of Shavuos, and Hashem comes down on Har Sinai, but we count 49 days and we prepare for Him. So there's a mutually, a mutual coming of close, of Klal Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're Hashem's sister. And then Sukkot, we do all the work. Sukkot, we do the tshuva. We prepare to be eligible for Hashem's love. Sukkot, Hashem, we are Hashem's mother, so to speak. But the Yom Tif of Pesach is the unique opportunity of the year where we don't, we're not cleaning ourselves off from our Averois. We're not even doing anything. We're just showing up at the Seder, so to speak. And the Rebbe Shalom says, don't worry, this is the Zman of the year. I jump over the door and I aviate the need for you to take the first step and it's a month of Tal and not a month of Geshem. And how we're learning that every day is invested with Kedusha Rosh Chodesh and every hour is like an entire day. V'kan ha'ben shayel. So here's the million dollar question. Ma'anishtana ha'layla ha'zemikol ha'leilois. If it's really a man of Tal and a man of Isarusa de la'ila, and a zman where the Riban Sham carries us, and it's a zman of Chodesh Asher Yeshua Isma Kifais, then why do we literally have more mitzvahs the night of the Seder than every, any night of the year? Ba'av or Zedah, Vudraham says we have 12 mitzvahs, we have the Dalit Koisais, we have Matzah, we have Mara, we have Charoises, we wash our hands twice, and we have a tradition from Rabbi Chanan, who has a tradition from the Vilna Goin, that there are 64 mitzvahs the night of the Seder, it's literally more mitzvahs than we do any total month of the year, let alone night of the year. Well, if it's a month that Rav Hashem says, "Hey, you're my daughter," it's the it's the night of Tal, it's Arusa de Leila. So why so much avoda? We shouldn't do anything the night of the seder. We should bring a hammock, lay back, and say, "Rav Hashem, elevate me." Why all the avoda? Comes the Bas Ayin, Rabbi Avram Doiv of Averich. We were just at his kever a short while ago, the last time we were in Eretz Yisrael, in, buried in Svas. The Bas Ayin. And the Bas Ayin writes that this question is the question of the Chacham. Moho Avoida Hazois Lachem. What are you getting so worked up about? The Matzah, the Moror, the Charoises, the, pre- the preparation, the Hachana, the Avoida. Wrong month! That's for Tishrei, the month of Nisan, is the month of Tal, the Sarusa de la It's your, your area in the area. You don't have to do anything in Nisan. It's Yeshua Isma Kifais. And that's a very good question. That's a very intelligent question. And the answer, says the Basayin, is Ein Maftirin Achara Pesach Afikoinen. We say to the Chacham, you're right. Technically, we don't have to do anything. But anytime you're given a freebie, and anytime you're given a gift, easy come and easy go. Shabin Laila Hayo bin Laila Avad. It's like the Kikai and the Yaina. Anything you don't work for, it comes and it goes. If you want to hang on to it, if you want to savor the taste of all of these spiritual gifts that the Yibam Shem is giving you for free, and it's on credit, and it's Tal, and it's the Sarusa de Leila. You want to savor the flavor and you want to take it with you for the entire year. You want to be able to pack away these spiritual achievements so that the taste remains in your mouth, then you got to sweat and you got to work. Because anything that comes easy, you can't hang on to it unless you earn it. So yes, on the one hand, the month of Nisan, sit back, Harchev piyu v'amalei l'ivan sham will, just fill us up with spiritual attainment. But if you want all of that ruchnias to stay with you the whole year, then it behooves us to prepare for it and to work for it. And then we'll be zoicha to take all of these matanois with us throughout the whole year. Because Nisan really encompasses the whole year. Every day is a Rosh Chodesh. Every hour is an, entire, is an entire day. May we be zoicha to utilize this very special zman, Avnei Nezer says, the Zman is of such precious value, every hour is reckoned like a day. And as the Chidusha Harim writes, that if we would appreciate the value of Chodesh Nisan, 
Loi hayinu mevat lemafilu rega. We would not waste even a moment. So I want to wish everybody, um, thank everybody for coming. Again, big yashu kayach to Rabbi Ezra Klein for arranging the shurim. Shkayach to Rabbi Chaim Fuhr. And thanks everyone for joining. And bracha v'hatzlacha, all the best. Kol tov. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.